في ما تركزيش على مش مركزش Welcome back. It's time now to have our quick press review and we are going to start with Al Ahram. And before we start, let me first welcome our dear guest live here in the studio, Dr. Hela Anar, our political analyst. Thank you very much for being with us, ma'am. You're right. We are going to start with Al Ahram, as I said. Al Sisi and Salman inaugurate the strategic partnership between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. 17 agreements and memo, memos of understanding and an executive program for cooperation in all fields. An agreement to create a land bridge between Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Still with the same issue, but uh, taking you to Al Masri Lyon, where we continue to read its main banner. President Al Sisi says Egypt and Saudi Arabia shoulder the responsibility of both the Arab and Islamic nations. King Salman says both countries are the uh, uh, fortress of the nation and their cooperation is the beginning of a new Arab era. We refuse any intervention in the internal affairs. The president grants King Salman the order of Nile Merit. The medal uh, is the highest in Egypt. Al Sisi and Salman witnessed the signing ceremony of 17 agreements, executive programs, and memos. And Minister of International Cooperation says the agreement of Sinai University is to enhance the level of education. Still with the same issue, but from Al Masri Al Yom, King Salman links Egypt and Saudi Arabia. Al Sisi and Salman signed 17 agreements. We have more details in the coming report. Saudi King Salman on Friday announced plans to build a bridge over the Red Sea to Egypt. The Saudi monarch is on a five-day trip to Cairo. Saudi Arabia has been the key backer of Egypt since 2013, following the June 30th revolution. King Salman, who touched down in Cairo on Thursday to an official and popular welcome, made the announcement after meeting with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi at the President's Itahadeya Palace. Salman said that he had agreed with his brother, President al-Sisi, to build a bridge connecting the two countries. He added that this historic step to connect the two continents, Africa and Asia, is a transformation that will increase trade between the two continents to unprecedented levels. Al-Sisi, who minutes earlier had presented the king with the ceremonial Nile Kohler, suggested naming the structure the King Salman ibn Abdelaziz Bridge. Thousands of Saudi tourists visit Egypt annually and thousands of Egyptians visit Saudi Arabia each year for Muslim pilgrimage. Hundreds of thousands of Egyptians work in the kingdom. Following Salman's announcement, representatives of both countries signed 17 investment deals and memos of understanding. A government official had said that the deals agreed with Saudi Arabia throughout Salman's visit would amount to about 1.7 billion U.S. dollars, 1.5 billion euros. They include an agreement to set up a university and homes in South Sinai, as well as a power plant. According to the Kingdom's ambassador to Egypt, the Saudis are expected to make another major announcement on Saturday. Ahmad Katan wrote on Twitter that the investment deals that will be signed on Saturday evening will be a surprising amount that will please everyone. Welcome back. Dr. Hala, the timing of the visit is very important. Despite the fact that it's very much well prepared and we knew, um, um, I think, two or three months before the visit of uh, the Saudi monarch, that timing of this visit is a message to not only to the Egyptians or to the Arab nation, to the Islamic one, but to the international community. Mm -hmm. What are the messages uh, delivered by uh, the Saudi king's visit to Egypt, especially in these days? There has been much talk about differences between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Uh, many circles, many international quarters do not like cooperation between Saudi Arabia and Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, they are trying all the time uh, to create differences between the two countries. Mm -hmm. They are dreaming of creating differences between the two countries b because they are two very important pillars for the Islamic world and the Arabic world. If they cooperate, it's not in the interest of any enemies of the region or, or of any international force working against the interest of the region. Mm -hmm. If they cooperate, this is for the best of Saudi Arabia and for Egypt and for the whole region, for the Islamic world. They are very strong countries. 
and they are prestigious countries. Everyone else listens to them. If they cooperate, this is a formidable force. Mm -hmm. And this formidable force, of course, is not very nice for Israel for, or for other powers who support Israel. Why, ma'am, there are all the time uh, sides which are here all the, uh, to use or to seize the opportunity to, whenever there's an, any kind of differences? And this is completely normal between even friends. Yes, of course. And we all know that America and the United Kingdom, for example, they are allies. But from time to time, you would find differences between the strategies of, 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 of those two heavyweight countries. Yes. But uh, we do not find people or sides to try to use these differences to... Um, uh, to say that uh, the ties are strained, that uh, uh, bad things are going to happen, that uh, diplomatic ties are going to be cut, uh, yes. uh, no stuff like that. But yes. when it comes to the Arab countries, they're all the time conspiracy theory, I don't know if I'm going to be accused even of conspiracy theory, yes. or people decide to see the opportunity, oh, uh, the Egyptian Saudi ties are not going to be the same. The Saudi Egyptian ties are going to face a lot of obstacles on the way, no stuff like that. Why? In fact, in politics, differences is very normal mm -hmm. because every country must take care of its own interests mm -hmm. and every country has its own vision. There are no identical visions of any two countries, no matter how friendly they are, how important their ties are. Sometimes there must be some differences. That, that doesn't mean there is enmity. They are yes. against each other because all the time Egypt has been with, with Saudi Arabia in its campaign in Yemen, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, some people do not like uh, the Egyptian contribution in Yemen, but this is the security of Egypt too. It's not only of Saudi Arabia. The security of the Red Sea is something very important for both That's countries. They both must keep their national security and mm -hmm. that this begins even further than Yemen. Mm -hmm. They must cooperate yes. to ensure their own interests. Uh, they must cooperate in, in many things because, as I said, they are the pillars of the region. Mm -hmm. uh, Saudi Arabia is uh, like the ruler of the whole Gulf area. Mm -hmm. It is the boss of the Gulf area. It has its a very prestigious mm -hmm. world in the whole Islamic world. Yes. And Amen Egypt is the same in the Islamic world and in the Arabic world because Egypt is a formidable power. No I one can do without I've, Egypt. I've read something which I think uh, um, is to echo what you've just said, ma'am. If the Arab and Islamic nation uh, is divided into Asia and Africa, uh, Egypt is the big sis in Africa and Saudi Arabia is the big sis in Asia. Yes, and they it's, are both big brothers for yeah. all the Islamic world. It's our destiny. Yes. To continue with uh, the news tackling the historical visit of the Saudi king to Egypt, which started on Thursday and is going to continue till Monday, inshallah, we read from El Yom El Saba, the summit of the strategic bridge tonight, the surprise of King Salman, a land bridge between the kingdom and Egypt, the University of Salman in Sinai, in a tour to be specific and the live caller for the Saudi monarch. al Sisi says, the deeply rooted and stability of the ties between Egypt and the kingdom can face challenges together. Salman says, our ties are invincible fortress. A land bridge to link the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and the president grants the Saudi monarch the Nile caller. We have more details. President Abdel Fattah Sisi and visiting Saudi King Salman ibn Abdelaziz on Friday exchanged praise on each other's country and their bilateral ties. President Al Sisi said in a televised speech that the visit by Saudi King Salman comes as a confirmation of the pledges of brotherhood and solidarity before the two countries. Al Sisi added that he believes that the special nature of the Saudi Egyptian relationship will enable them to confront together shared challenges and to deal seriously with whoever tries to harm Arab nationality. 
Later on Friday, the custodian of the two holy shrines met with Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, the most prestigious institution in Sunni Islam. Al Azhar said in a statement that they had discussed means to reinforce cooperation and coordination to promote a moderate Islam and the struggle against extremism and terrorism. King Salman ibn Abdul Aziz is set to visit Al Azhar Mosque on Saturday, marking the first visit to be made to Al Azhar by a Saudi monarch. Welcome back. Uh, it's time to continue with the, the uh, results, the fruitful results of the historical visit of Saudi King Salman bin Abdul Aziz. And uh, to continue with what we have just uh, listened to in the comprehensive detailed report, 17 agreements. But on Twitter, on his account on Twitter, Ambassador Ahmed Al Qattan, the Saudi ambassador here in Cairo, said that today or tonight, to be accurate, Saturday evening is going to witness another surprise and another bunch of uh, uh, Saudi investments uh, which uh, are going to be announced to the uh, Egyptian people. And he said something that it's going to please everyone. How do you see this move? In fact, it's expected uh, the relation between Egypt and Saudi Arabia to turn from grants to investment because investment is in the best interest of both countries. A win-win situation. Uh, uh, yes, uh, both wins and uh, it opens uh, job opportunities, mm -hmm. it opens uh, chances for development and both countries wins. Mm -hmm. And no one can say that uh, just the Saudi Arabia is just lending a hand to Egypt. Both countries mm -hmm. are lending a hand to each other. They both need each other. They both, when they cooperate, they both benefit. Mm -hmm. And this is the best for them. We cannot, we cannot forget the cooperation between Egypt and Saudi Arabia uh, during 1973 war. Mm -hmm. It was very important sure. for Egypt. And since then, since then, there has been trials to edge a rift between both countries. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always continuous. All, all the time you hear talking about what's different between Saudi Arabia and Egypt and trying to antagonize each country against the other. And they do not succeed, of course. Investment links both countries together and it's a way of development for both countries. Mm -hmm. And this interaction between countries makes their interests one. Mm -hmm. They cannot differ. Because what hurts and one can hurts the other. And also deny that the leadership in both countries are wise enough. The and, and they are keen, of course, for uh, this cooperation. Both leaders, yes. or, or the leaders, uh, uh, whether here or there, whether now or before, they were all the time that wise to contain any kind of differences and yes. not to let anybody or any country or any side to intervene to spoil these deeply rooted relations. Back to Al-Ahram front page where we continue to read. Italy summons its ambassador in Egypt for consultations. Uh, ministry statement says uh, Italian Foreign Minister Paolo uh, Gentiloni was recalling Ambassador Maurizio Massari from the Egyptian capital for urgent evaluation of more uh, initiatives to relaunch the commitment aimed at determining the truth about the murder of Regini. The same issue is tackled in Al-Masri Lyon. Italy summons its ambassador in Egypt. Italian sources say the file of the Egyptian investigations is not complete. The same issue is tackled also in Lyon El Saba. Continuing the examination of the evidence in uh, Rome meeting, uh, in the Roma meeting uh, around Regini, and Egyptian foreign ministry releases a statement saying it had not been officially notified about the recall adding that it awaits the return of the investigative team to hear the, its evaluation of the meetings. Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Councillor Ahmed Abu Zaid, was quoted as saying that it would then assess the situation and there re will be the necessary communications at the appropriate level. After two days in Rome, the investigative team already returned in the morning after spending those two days with their Italian counterparts cooperating to find or to solve the uh, mystery of the Italian student uh, crime. Ma'am, 
how do you see the um, media dealing with this issue? Because all the time, uh, I, whenever here, for example, Al-Yawm Al-Saba said about the statement of uh, Ahmed Abu Zaid. Other yes. newspapers would say, no, Italy summoned its ambassador and they do not add the return or the, uh, the uh, answer, the statement, the of, statement the of the foreign minister. Yes. I don't know how do you see the media's reaction. Uh, sometimes they cannot reach the official, ask it to, to respond to what's happening. Mm -hmm. Some, yani, we, we cannot say it's inten it intentional, mm -hmm. that they don't want uh, to say that the foreign ministry had a statement. Mm -hmm. But in fact, there are, there are not many details about uh, this issue, mm -hmm. because Italy has been pressured on the relations with Egypt, even before regime is killing and now the West is pressuring Italy and Italy is pressuring Egypt to do something the West could not do. Mm -hmm. uh, in France for example this uh, terrorist attacks that took place in November in last November mm -hmm. that's about five months ago they are still uh, arresting the suspects mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't solve the crime completely how do they expect Egypt to solve a problem or a crime? I suspect mm -hmm. that any security forces or any force in Egypt did this, committed this crime. It's, this is the work of a foreign uh, intelligence service. Yeah. They may have used the Egyptians or Egyptian thieves, Egyptian traitors, but this is not the work of Egyptian security forces. And they know that. Mm -hmm. And they cannot expect Egypt to solve such a crime. In it such, is, in such, it is in intricate, such it's complex, weeks. and yeah. it's the work of a clever intelligence service. You, you were talking about November uh, attacks uh, uh, simply, were, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, they have not uh, solved the riddle yes. of, uh, of Kennedy's assassination or Diana's accident. Anyhow, uh, tomorrow is another day and we're going to be with you again uh, in another press review. It's going to be next Saturday, inshallah. Till then, many thanks for being with us. Thanks for your input, Dr. Hala and our, our political analyst. You're welcome. But this we come to the end of our press uh, review. Stay tuned on Line TV International right after the short break. We are going to be back with the remaining part of our program. <laughs>